yeah so we almost had uh, touched upon the vital aspect conversion of the vital or the emotional being uh, in the last two last sessions and mother uh, really shares in great detail uh, about conversion of the emotional being or the vital uh, in us uh, according to them so the nomenclature is vital the the emotional being the terminology used is the vital being so i thought we'll just touch upon the finishing uh, kind of uh, touches upon the vital and then we will do two exercises to touch upon the psychic being in us the psychic or the soul uh, individuality in us and according to mother and shurabindo it's it's very very what can one say it's almost mother says that it is a tragedy if we do not get in touch with our soul so uh, that's our one can say it's the human birth uh, one of the urgent purposes is to get in touch go mother says go deep down within and get in touch with our soul and they have given such beautiful you know maps have been given by mother and shurabindo but the journey is individual it is uh, of our own you know everyone we may have pointers hints here and there yet the journey is really unique so i'll just uh, share about the last part that i wanted to share i don't have a document today i was not able to make it since i was traveling but i'll just uh, speak it out loud and then we will share our reflections and move on to the psychic part then so uh, one thing very important was uh, mother talks about becoming conscious of inner movements why do i react like that you know why must i react like that so that we can change the nature because if i am not aware of the nature then what would i change so i'll just read this out yeah so here mother says uh, it means to be conscious of one's inner truth conscious of the different parts of one's being and their respective functions so as if we are like a machine and each part has a separate function and i must be conscious of each part you must know why you do this why you do that you must know your thoughts know your feelings all your activities all your movements of what you are capable etc and to know yourself is not enough this knowledge must bring a conscious control to know oneself perfectly is to control oneself perfectly so again we know that easier said than done we may begin to in bits and pieces know about ourselves and yet self mastery is something which comes gradually it's like a long process tedious process where we have to almost wage a battle you know against our tendencies tendencies and mother shares that it's never too early to begin never too early to begin and never too late to continue yeah so to perfect oneself one must become conscious of oneself yeah and please uh, keep sharing if you have anything to share in between and just share anecdotes here and there so when we talk about the disciplining of the emotional being the vital being mother shares that the most of the disciplines deal with suppression like you know we have heard about ascetics who would shun away the body and shun away the senses so that they don't they are not betrayed by the senses so mother shares generally all disciplines dealing with the vital or this passionate being that we are the life force all disciplines dealing with the vital being and its purification and control proceed by suppression abstinence and asceticism this procedure is certainly easier and quicker although less deeply enduring and effective so i may be just able to have a breakthrough but then i'll not be able to endure that persistence purif persistence in purification of the vital or the emotional being again some desire with overwhelm me again some emotional overwhelm will have uh, i'll have owing to the fact that i'm suppressing it i'm trying to control it by suppression by shunning away so anything where we use force 
too much of force is used there it is not a very long lasting conversion uh, immediately i may see a result but then again it has a tendency to kind of leash back again so she says uh, to become conscious of the various movements in one cell and be aware of what one does and why one does is the indispensable starting point yeah so this is indispensable that i must turn the microscope within the being i am aware of what i am thinking what i am feeling at all, all moments when somebody says this when that person says this what are the movements in my being why do they happen so a kind of a self study is going on self as if we have been become a scientist to observe our own being then she talks about children and also our own self the child must be taught to observe to note his reactions and impulses and their causes to become discerning witness of his desires his movements of violence passion his instincts of possession appropriation and domination and background of vanity which supports them so there is a part in me which supports my movement that why did i do that you know why did i uh, support that violent movement in me so i support it with reason some i give some reasoning so that arrogance also has to be uh, known that here i go supporting my own weaknesses again hmm. and then the one thing which was very very beautiful uh, which i came across i have been sharing this in many many sessions also uh, i have told you about this teacher called rupert spira who gives us a direct path of knowing who we truly are so he gives us this direct path and again he is not the first one the path has been given but i feel his approach is very contemporary like people like us would understand his approach uh, he talks about uh the word he uses is awareness we can also use consciousness which mother uses that know that you are able to know your thoughts because you are aware of your thought you are able to know your feeling because you are aware of your feeling you are able to know your sense perception because you are aware of that sense or the ripple or the vibration so first comes awareness then comes the content of awareness like first comes the space and then comes the things in the space like a chair or a table or whatever now chair or table will come and go but the space will never come and go so just like that our basic true nature which is consciousness or awareness never comes and goes thoughts and feelings come and go sense perceptions come and go my body comes and goes but consciousness never comes and goes it is just like space so mother has given a beautiful long passage on trying to find out what is truly myself hmm? uh am i the thought am i the feeling or am i something more than that so i'll just read a bit of it i think it's very clear and crisp so we'll be able to gain something out of it mm. yeah so she says we have to distinguish between one's consciousness and one's thoughts feelings impulses so i have to distinguish between the space and the things in the space yeah and in this way one can learn how to shift it so at time at one moment of time i am aware of a thought at another moment of time i am now aware of my feeling another moment of time i am now aware of the headache that i have maybe now the i am aware of the tingling sensation in my calves or maybe i have a pain here or there so i can shift the consciousness in one moment i can become conscious of a thought in other i can become conscious of how i am feeling right now in and yet another moment i can shift and become aware of maybe there is a pain somewhere a vibration somewhere or in another moment i can use that very consciousness to smell what it smells like 
Yeah. So she says that we should know how to shift and uh, this shifting. And in this way, we can learn how to shift it. One can put one's consciousness in the body, put it in the vital. So I'm aware how I am feeling emotionally. Put it in the psychic. That's the best place, she says, to put it. And one can put one's consciousness in the mind. So you're aware of the thoughts coming and going. Can raise it above the mind. And with one's consciousness, one can go into all regions of universe. So this is the faculty or this is my true essence, which can never be separated from me. Consciousness can never be separated from me. That's what I am truly, I truly am. I may have a missing limb, you know, maybe my hand is cut, my, uh, my limb is missing, but my consciousness is not missing. Hmm? So uh, then she, again, there is a long paragraph that she shares here that you must become aware of what truly is myself. Is thought and feeling myself? Because that keeps on changing. Is uh, emotions myself? Is sense perceptions, bodily sensations myself? That keeps on changing. What is it in me that has not changed since the time I have seen myself grow? And then we become aware of this faculty of knowing or looking that looks at everything, that knows everything. It is very subtle movement is required to kind of get in touch with it. Like as if you are looking at your own looking. So first I'm looking at something and then I am looking at the own looking itself. And that looking never goes away. Even when I have closed my eyes, I'm still looking at the inner movements. That looking never goes away. On the surface, it appears as a mental movement. That what happens when I'm asleep, then I'm not looking. But then something is still looking. And that's why I'm aware of my dreams. That's why I am aware that I slept well. Because there is something in me which never sleeps. That is aware of all the movements. So to this part of my being, I have to identify myself as this is me. And this is not an object that I'll be able to kind of hold it or grasp it. I am not an object. So it requires certain training, certain act, kind of, I would say, practice slowly that I become more conscious of that consciousness as myself. And their detachment also comes as a byproduct. Because now I know myself as something separate from my emotions, separate from thoughts and feelings and sensations. So the detachment also comes as a byproduct. Mastery also comes as a byproduct. Since now I know myself as consciousness, now I can master my thought. I can take it here or there. I can, I'm not dependent for my completion on a thought or a feeling or sensation. So this is an essential part of our spiritual journey or self-discovery. Yeah, anything here? Anyone? Yes, Monica. Yeah, I, I understand the spiritual journey, like to some extent, like it just started. So, you know, that awareness and uh, observing. And uh, also, you know, like when you said that uh, you feel detached. So, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, like inwardly, I am understanding. But like yesterday, we had some family friends who had come know after like one and a half years first time like we had somebody in our house so so i just felt like you know like i'm so aware and detached and you know this just feels like you know i am not able to engage like i used to so you know like uh, a quietness like and I'm, I'm pushing myself to you know get into it and be there although uh, you know like i know it like i don't know if others can make out but i know that you know, like this, you know, like uh, uh, the way I would have been a couple of years ago, like I'm not able to give that kind of energy because I feel so detached and aware of what's going on. So, you know, like this, I uh, feel with uh, even children and, you know, like uh, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
of their you you need to engage with them and their world is now so different and there's so much into the they, they just started on so much that uh, you know they uh, they want to teach you also and yes so aise mein na when you feel so detached and you're observing yourself and yet you have to engage in it and you just can't say ki okay i want to take this path and you know i so to keep everybody along and yet uh, you know participate and not involve yourself so so wo wo thoda sa samajh aa raha hai it's not that it's struggling or anything but wo samajh aa raha hai ki involvement kam ho raha hai participation hai but involvement kam ho raha hai you know like uh, so i don't know uh, i uh, i'm observing this so i just felt like sharing yeah thank you shweta hmm. i think i can much empathize with what you have sh- you have shared felt it myself also and mujhe lagta hai ki these are just phases which keep on coming and going because at this point of time in life maybe i require this something in me requires this uh, inward absorption and at the same time i would also say that many a times so see imagine example that i want to give and then i'll share my own experience once an actor truly knows himself as the actor truly you know he has this strong knowing of himself as the actor then the beauty is that he can become a beautiful villain also why because he is not attached to the story anymore so he can go deep into the character he is not insecure that oh my god what will happen if i lose myself yeah mujhe lagta hai i may be wrong but that's my feeling at the moment that this knowing ourselves as consciousness it is a very long journey yeah very very long and there are phases in between where i may feel like this detachment that you are sharing you know again i have felt it keep on feeling it on off and on and at times when i am drenched in the consciousness i would say when there is no insecurity about who i am other thing is also happening again maybe you will share you know your own experience what happens is that at times i have seen myself very detached from this connection what you were sharing maybe some relative at home and i feel really not involved completely at other times it also happens that uh owing to the fact that there is so much fullness within i am actually able to completely lose myself in giving or you know in getting involved with what they have to share or whatever so mujhe lagta hai ki dono cheeze na hamari needs ke hisab se whatever i am re- needing right now they just keep on coming and going like at times i need this inward absorption Th- that is the need of my you know uh, the inner being at times the inner being is so fulfilled you know that as if it spills itself out and it does not want anything from the experience but it loses itself in the experience also so i don't know what you have to say here but i f- i feel both of the movements happen yeah yeah i get it losing myself in the experience na in the flow that happens to me in my classroom you know when i am with like i i really lose myself in the exp- it's very it's very organic and it's always you know very satisfying uh, at home what happens sometimes is that uh, uh, you know like uh, when you are ch- you when you have children who are like you know growing up and they have so many things to share and it feels like a huge mountain and many things you know like wo so uh, earlier uh, what i could have done is like what they feel becomes what i feel you know there is no separation you know like but now sometimes you know like i i know it's their journey and i feel you know i am little detached so this this i don't know how you know uh, i'm there and yet i know that you know they will go through what they have to go through this separation sometimes feels scary you know ki uh, i also share it with them like uh, but uh, yeah i sometimes feel like what about my role as a mother maybe they need me so much more right now and i am already feeling this separation you know so that thing uh, 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 
but uh, it's like i can't help it and i am sharing it with them and uh, uh, i don't know it feels like a journey you know <laughs> like I, 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 and yeah unknown you know i'm so okay to that unknown thing ki jo hoga wo hoga aur wo zaruri hai isliye hoga you know aise ban gayi suddenly so that thing yeah I think I it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, opening to the unknown, you know, yeah. opening to the unfolding of life. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. maybe if uh, they would don't connect at some point, maybe eventually they will understand. Uh, you know, like uh, where I was coming from. Yeah, or, you know, like yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. I think Rupert Spira also talks about this. I don't know if you have heard that uh, talk. He talks about this two approaches. vedantic and tantric approaches so first we do this neti neti you know i am not this i am not this i am not this and i know myself as consciousness or awareness and then knowing myself stabilizing myself as consciousness i go out into the world again and i see what is there to thought if not for the presence of awareness so all is me all is me all is me so first we do neti neti exactly. you know and what you are sharing is actually i am able to you know relate your experience exactly there because first i do this neti neti okay my child is not me this is not me this is not me let me find out who i am yeah so this requires a certain kind of a silent quietude inward you know self absorption and then I, as i am gradually immersing myself into it and becoming more of it i see oh my god i can be there completely you know that i can feel the hurt of the child the pain of the child and yet at the same time yet, be uh, away be away yeah. from it yeah yes, yeah. yeah so that is what because you know like uh, they matlab wo hai na ki abhi stories se aapka rishta dheere dheere kam ho raha hai aur wo to stories mein ghus rahe unka wo age of they getting into the stories so uh, you know they need that conviction from me also ki you know this you know like they need some validation ki this is my story <laughs> you know so go go to samajhna to be there to participate and yet deeply know that you know like I, i can feel that you know distance and i know what is needed in their journey will happen so ye jo hota na ye samajh <laughs> yeah what a challenge you know what a challenge yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful challenge But you can't you can't avoid it because i really feel that uh, more and more you know like uh, i'm being tested last one month say the tests and challenges are just increasing and i know it's it's mother's grace you know because so many knots are like getting untied and uh, i and i know that uh, that just makes me understand ki okay aage to bahut bada pahad <laughs> you know ye bhi samajh aa raha but at the same time there is this solace ki it's okay you know like wo nahi hai wo restlessness nahi hai and uh, yet the challenges are there you know you have to face it and andar se you know ki it is for the larger good you know so ye jo i don't know how to explain but uh, yeah no i think you you've been what whatever you explained is pretty clear yeah pretty clear yeah yeah so and beautiful also and you know uh, amazing to see this unfolding in front of our eyes you know and it's really amazing i was i think talking to somebody else uh, yes uh, in the afternoon there was another session pain and suffering course and there i was just i think somebody was asking about what about uh, how much is destiny how much is like fixed and how much is open and i was talking that the mystery is that none of us can really say exactly how much is open and how much is destiny and that's the mystery of it because you know uh, otherwise we if everything in our life becomes very like okay thak 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 life will be really boring you know that everybody knows what is going to happen <laughs> but when there is so much of knowing also and then mystery also still keeps on unfolding challenges difficulties you know we don't know what we find in our own nature i think one is just in all like you know the beauty of this divine comedy so that keeps us going you know enthusiasm absolutely yeah, yeah very recently i also felt this about anchor because i am somebody 
I have not felt anger in me. Like I, I would claim it like since like since I have known myself, you know. So anger to hai nahi. But uh, very nahi seriously and like uh, when you know like uh, uh, you know like it's tested also. I feel ki nahi. I koshish karti hu ki chalo gussa nikalu but nahi aata. But uh, just few days back uh, when I, I just I just claimed it at the nth time to somebody, you know like and then uh, the next. day i feel ki uh, something happened and i was so troubled for my loved one that i felt some anger which was like beyond what i felt you know literally like i, I experienced something that i have never experienced and at the same time i could feel that this is god's grace because you know there was this in me which i never 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 accepted never accepted and uh you know and you know what like uh, i it was very weird because i was totally feeling it and feeling it like how you know i had to close the door and like i was literally like you know banging the pillows and all which i've never done okay <laughs> matlab something like that oh kabhi nahi and i was like ki kya ho raha you know i'm not this ye kya matlab it was totally like first time ever in life ऐसे वॉट इज दिस हैपनिंग एंड यू नो सामने लाइक आई आई हैव माई यू नो go to uh, you know like uh, symbols and all that so i'm like just uh, talking also i'm aware this is happening you know both together like you say the chair and the space both together i'm aware of both and uh, you know what uh, i totally felt it and this was such a wave that i felt ki so intense ki you know ye to ab kab jayega you know when will i but next day i got up and i was totally myself and i'm like ye kya hua tha yesterday you know so i i know that i allowed i allowed it to happen i was so aware and i didn't suppress it i allowed it to happen and it just left me next day and i found my calm for the i mean uh, the reason was such that it would it should have kept me like going like this for you know many days if if that you know like what i felt was but who feelings are they and you you know just give space for it and then it leaves you and this was one thing मेरी पूरी जिंदगी में मैंने ये फीलिंग को एक्नोलेज नहीं किया या एंड यू नो लाइक आई जस्ट डिसोसिएटेड एंड क्लेम दैट नो दिस इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ मी यू नो लाइक एंड दैट फीलिंग मेड होम इट एक्सप्रेस्ड इट एंड इट लेफ्ट यू नो सो आई जस्ट फील ये क्या था यू नो एंड सो ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल इट यू हैव टू एक्सेप्ट या या यू नो योर शेयरिंग रिमाइंड्स मी ऑफ अ पोएम जस्ट अ सेकंड by rumi i'll just read it or maybe put it on the sharing also maybe you can all look at it just a second so there is this poem by rumi which is called the guest house i put it on screen yeah i've read it yeah you've read it <laughs> yeah 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 this one this being yeah, yeah. human is a guest house Every, would you like to read it shweta it would be nice if you read yeah it. yeah sure sure uh, the guest house this being human is a guest house every morning a new arrival a joy a depression a meanness some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor welcome and entertain them all even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture still treat each guest honorably he may be clearing you out for some new delight <laughs> yeah absolutely the dark thought the shame the malice meet them at the door laughing and invite them in be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond so totally you know like because this was uh, so needed for my growth because this was one emotion i never gave energy and i actually you know like kept it like you know i, I never welcome you you know i was so proud of myself i was really humbled by this experience because you know it's not about telling anybody or you know i can still not share it and be that person ki i don't get angry but i am so humbled and i feel so crushed you know like by this experience that i felt that you know i can never get you know i'm so above it that i was really humbled by it you know so beautiful it is yeah <laughs> this poem very, totally very very nice 
powerful <laughs> yeah and it's amazing the moment we allow each feeling thought sensation yes. to be i think we become okay with it then Absolutely. then it's not a resist usually what happens so i read i think uh, rupert again rupert says that the universe or our own consciousness it says yes to everything and that's why it manifests a thought comes a feeling comes anger comes yeah. depression so it it is already said yes that's why it is there now the ego yeah. or whatever the image i have in my mind my own self image yeah. that tries to resist that oh my god oh my god why are you here <laughs> and that creates the misery or the suffering totally so it's a yeah please yeah. no when you say you are like so non judgmental and you feel it and you believe in it and uh, you know and yet you feel ki virtues hi hai anger to bilkul you know like uh, so it's it's like such an eye opener ki you know virtues and vices will go hand in hand it's just that when you move beyond that you know that's when you understand uh, you know this life better yeah so Yeah. that happened yeah this is really beautiful what you share so virtues and vices go hand in hand and going beyond them would you know again the vision or the visual one may have here is that vices or virtues are furniture in my room <laughs> and i am the space which can allow everything to exist and go on or whatever yes yeah, yeah. beautiful so yeah like i wanted to share this because you know like uh, you really understand how uh, awareness getting there and how uh, i don't know aage kaisa journey hai but yeah you know those baby steps i can feel yeah. yeah thank you so much for sharing yeah beautiful birenji any reflection from you on this if any anything that you resonated with or any personal experience yeah so uh, you know yesterday also i was reflecting on uh, these points because i'd heard it in another context basically whether one is one's own thoughts one's own feelings and you know one's own awareness and uh, or, you know those different dimensions but one of the things i always struggle how much ever i try uh, you, know, you know the mind still goes away so that continues to be a st- struggle to remain in the present moment to be conscious basically the, one of the things i realized the best way to remain conscious is to be through our body sensations rather than through the mind so <clears throat> that is one realization i've had but <clears throat> easier said than done the mind still goes away uh, to the past or the future and um, you know uh, trying to make it come back is actually a struggle and a constant effort so uh, that's where i find things basically absolutely i think this effort that you mention talk about i think this has to be a constant endeavor absolutely with you this effort of bringing ourselves back and you correctly you know pointed out that bodily sensations or breath for example can be a beautiful tool to just coming back here and now yeah and we can allow ourselves to plan you know about past future we we can allow ourselves to use the thought and plan do the planning but the thing is that more often than not we are actually abusing the thought we are not really making really nice creative plans we are abusing we are really uh, kind of deteriorating our condition by abuse of thought so that i think there we can use this effort that you mentioned bringing ourselves back to the here and now and also giving us challenging activities you know because otherwise in our day to day life the the way we are you know the lifestyles we have if i do not have any absorptive activity the mind will stray here and there so one of the tools just one of it is also to give myself something so big that absorbs my attention give myself something so high and wide Uh, for example if i'm you know maybe fighting with an uh, having an argument with a per- person now as long as we are okay and we are having the fight we have enough time on hand we are okay we are fighting we are doing the argument the moment there is fire in the house we both will just leave the argument and run to save our lives so what is more important is actually saving our lives and not the argument but that we do not realize 
when we are in the heat of argument. Then everything else takes a backseat and argument becomes the most important. But the, the moment there is fire, all the argument, all the differences will go away. And what we will care about is how to save ourselves. So if I give myself something bigger, there the trivial can slowly leave me. And yet having said that, I would say nothing is trivial. Each experience of life can give us a lot if we are fully able to utilize it. So this was also something that, you know, I've been in the last two, three years trying to figure out what is this something larger that, you know, uh, I can be part of. Uh, and to be honest, it's that is also an, another struggle by itself. Uh, you know, matching one's own aspirations with what is one good at, uh, to what one connects with at a deeper level, and then bringing it all together in some form that is useful, both to the self and to others. I, I, that journey has also taken me in different directions, but uh, it's slowly taking some, going somewhere. But uh, still, I don't know what is the destination. I, I still don't know, but I just have to trust the process yeah. that it will finally reach there. Yeah. No, one little pointer here, Mother and Sri talk about that we have given too much importance to utility than beauty. If now in my life, I give more importance to where I find beauty, what process do I engage in which brings beauty to my life? What conversation do I engage in which brings beauty to my life? Then you would not have to really care about utility. It's only because I think we have focused too much, the consumerist attitude and the lifestyle we have. We focus too much on, Achha, iska purpose kya hai? Achha, tu kar kyo raha hai? Achha, tu kar kyo raha hai? Are bhaiya, sundar lagta hai, isle kar raha And if we actually stay close to beauty, we will always remain close to truth. Satyam, shivam, sundaram. You know, so that which is beautiful, if I stay close to something beautiful in me, either an activity, a person or, you know, something which brings me to more and more beauty, that always keeps me close to truth. So, if you don't have any attention, what will be the purpose of it? I will do it for the purpose of it. What will be the purpose of it? We don't have to worry about it. Because right now, it is actually serving truth. Whenever we are serving beauty, we are serving truth. So that can be one pointer, yeah. Thank you. A chote bachche hote na, I think Shweta, you know, is better. Chote bachche, you know, they are always, whatever little they are engaged in, maybe a clay something, a little, you know, maybe sand something, some colors here and there. They may make up a mess of it, you know, but for them, the mess is beautiful. For them, that is the absorption that they need. And that's what stays you know, uh, brings them or take, keeps them close to their own truth. And slowly we actually ruin the child by saying, Are tujhe isse milega kya? <laughs> what will you get out of this? Iska kaam kya hai? Iski utility kya hai? So we ask him actually, the child, to part from beauty for utility and slowly he loses what he actually wants in life. That happens with each one of us. Yes, Shweta. Yeah. Yes, yes, I, 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 I've seen this, uh, these moments, you know, in like children. And it's so joyful and uh, I think uh, uh, it's contagious also because, you know, like you also get into that moment, you also engage and you observe. It's nice. But, you know, what I feel is I'm not able to uh, suggest this to people around with their children who have a absolutely intellectual approach you know but see with my uh, school and with my parents i can that's my duty i do it but in my own personal and uh, surrounding you know with people who have little children i don't see the readiness you know like it goes into deaf ears and i don't feel like uh, uh, pushing it because they're not ready you know like uh, oh, so, oh it's beyond you know so like you know with uh, somebody would come home so they see with the child was into so many technical things and were drawing the color to oh, you know, parents bore ki, yes, ye theek nahi hai, ye to tumhara chidiya nahi lag raha hai, ye to chidiya, you know, like, so, humara jo approach hai na, but to tell it to somebody and to, and also when we were talking about this, uh, jo ye jo aap bolo na, satyam shivam sundaram, I totally, uh, you know, 
believed in this and yes you know because in that moment when you connect to your inner being this is what happens it is satyam it is shivam and it's sundaram it's really beautiful uh, but uh, you know like bhai uh, hai when you talk to people who are not yet ready to wo samajh aata hai ki even everything about children is you know unko sikhana hai competition ke liye drawing hai ye art hai to so, like what about the joy you know to wo bol rahe the nahi nahi but career bhi to ban sakta so i am still not equipped to deal with people in my personal life i can do it as my role you know as a teacher it comes very naturally and i see receptivity but uh, the people around you know close people also i don't know how to put it across this it's so important such an important point yeah yeah absolutely with you mujhe lagta hai ki jo the only thing that we can do um is as we have you would agree and uh, mother has shared we have talked about it many times to be a flower our own self yeah and the more i am convinced that i need to stay close to beauty and truth hota kya hai mujhe lagta hai and you are right that aisa lagta hai as if you are banging your head on a wall because the caretakers may not be ready to completely take it but then uh, slowly mujhe lagta hai that we also kind of get convinced more and more of what we are saying the more i get convinced Mm. I'm also able to actually step in the other person's shoes where he is right now, so mm-hmm. that I am able to guide him from near to far because I cannot really push him too far. Yes, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. you just can't say something that is you know they can't even relate to it. So, बिल्कुल. तो वही तो हाँ वही हाँ step by step. तो so, step by step हाँ मुझे लगता है कि मैंने भी ऐसे cases देखे हैं जहाँ पे ना uh, it feels in the beginning that it's difficult how would you approach it that but then if i am persistent for example agar humne ek baat kari parent ne bola ki but career ka kya hoga to main aur aage jaungi acha career se kya milta hai ye paisa acha paise se kya milta hai ye ultimately you will come back to joy only that what we want is peace and joy in life ye to mere dimag mein ho gayi hai sari dialogue ho gayi but wo bolu nahi bolu chalo chhod do ye to aise hota yeah yeah Yeah, I think yeah, I would, I should do it to now more. You know, वो जो reluctance है, I think I feel कि I'm stepping, uh, you know, into somebody else's ये uh, कि you know, am I should I? थोड़ा सा reluctance मेरे तरफ से होता है when whether it's needed, you know, कि मैं चुपी बैठ जाऊँ, it's just a social thing, like you know, they come, they go. So कितना वो to push it, uh, I think that is also part of journey only. सही कह रहे हो, सही कह रहे हो, yeah. <laughs> सही कह रहे हो और मुझे मैंने आपको वो एग्जांपल बताया था ना वो हेरिटेज स्कूल वाला देर इज फेलो है ना वो ब्रॉट विस्की इन हिज बॉटल्स एंड देन स्लोली ही गॉट ट्रांसफॉर्म सो मुझे लगता है कि व्हाट वी हैव इज आल्सो दैट वी वी आर एक्चुअली नैरोड डाउन बाय आवर डोमेस्टिक वॉल्स कि मुझे लगता है कि अच्छा मैं भाई को तो पुश करके समझा दूंगी लेकिन अगर कोई नेबर आ रहा है ना तो मैं एक्चुअली उसको पुश नहीं कर पाऊंगी क्योंकि मुझे लगता है यार नेबर है उसका अपना पर्सनल लाइफ है उसको अपनी यू नो जिंदगी है मैं क्यों उसको पुश करूं लेकिन होता क्या है कि द मोर वी ग्रो इनटू दिस यू नो अवर ओन एक्सपीरियंस एंड द वाइडनेस ऑफ इट मुझे लगता है दैट इवन द नेबर स्टैंड इक्वल एज माई ब्रदर सो आई वुड एक्चुअली बी कन्विंस्ड एंड नो मैटर इफ यू रिजेक्ट सेम और डज नॉट सी मी नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट टाइम आई विल एक्चुअली डू द सेम थिंग दैट आई वुड डू विद माई ब्रदर फॉर एग्जाम्पल द the kind of convin- conviction or whatever with which i speak yeah, yeah. Should, yeah. Uh, or in 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 this uh, apprehension of being what would they say and what would you know uh, i feel if they don't accept mujhe lagta hai wo dheere dheere na they wither away because what you are sharing is so beautiful that agar usko sunne ke baad wo aapko reject bhi kar de na aapne uske paas wo beech to chhod diya na aapne beech chhod diya yeah true 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 yeah wo wo thoda sa i think Uh, well, yeah. See, these reflections help. Yeah. Because this was there was such a strong need to you know say and you could see that doors are closed and then mm. you didn't know whether to take it further. But yeah, I think uh, slowly and gradually, we should say it. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. I remember that when we used to go to you know this. Satsangs in Noida uh, by Acharya Prashant. So, there was this. सर उनको कहते थे कि 
तुम अगर मान लो तुम्हें मूवी पे जाना है तो तुम अपने दोस्त को कैसे बोलते अरे चलना यार चलना यार चलना यार मूवी पे उसको लेके जाओगे और जब तुम्हें सत्संग पे आना है या ऐसी कोई टॉक सुनने आना है तो तुम सोचते हो अरे पता नहीं मैं उसको बोलू नहीं बोलू पता नहीं उसको अच्छा लगेगा कि नहीं लगेगा यू नो तो कहते हैं कि तुम में प्यार की कमी है यू नो अगर तुम रियली में इफ यू लव द अदर फेलो एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट गुड फॉर द फेलो यू वुड एक्चुअली कन्विंस हिम जस्ट लाइक यू कन्विंस हिम फॉर द मूवी <laughs> think that is true yeah. i can't even say how much of unlearning and learning that has happened in last 4 5 years just because my children just nudged and pushed and like wo to nahi chode na like wo just they just bringing it out like mama this this how can you you have to you know speak i have wo sab you know like this is something so wo i can see that wo kitne bhi mere bhi doors close the you know like we are all interconnected so kuch doors mere taraf se open hai aur main dusron ko nudge karungi kuch doors mere taraf se closed hai koi aur mujhe nudge karega to it's uh, so like we are walking each other home again awesome it comes back to that you know yeah awesome. and uh, yes uh, when i look back i feel ki yes because they kept on nudging and uh, i can see how yeah so you know how much growth it has given to me and they didn't spare they don't spare anybody so you know that uh, tells me that even i should not whatever <laughs> yeah that is true i i just reflected on this abhi right now you know while you were talking you just like yeah. yeah beautiful very true, true. Very true. <laughs> Great. So let us do this uh, little. So this was the last paragraph that I wanted to share to identify ourselves that with that space that allows everything and then let mm. lets it go, rather than to the stuff or the furniture in the room, so that we know who we truly are. We are much much more than all the content, and yet I am the content also. So I am one with it, and yet I am more than that. so we'll end the vital part there there is a lot more but i am just touching upon it so that we have that curiosity and then slowly uh, we'll take it on from there and then mother also shares about uh, two things on the vital which where she shares this excessive enthusiasm ki abhi kar lenge abhi kar lenge all things will get transformed in a day and then suddenly sinking into depression both these are parts of the vital extreme opposites of the vital being and mother shares that both of them needs to be taken care of or transformed because whenever i get enthusiasm is a beautiful thing because that's what keeps me going but when i am too excited you know then i'm wanting the result right now right now and then on the third day i see okay the anger is back again so i am sinking into depression oh my god mere se to kuch nahi hoga so both extremes are the part of vital being and that's uh, slowly we have to recognize the part and we have to almost talk to both of the parts to the part which is very enthusiastic i can say you know we we need this it's a long journey it's a long process so keep your energy contained so that it's not spent in one day and then you are out of energy we'll need this for a long run and to the part which is getting depressed one can say that again it's a long journey and just buck up and uh, you've already taken baby steps and it's not too far so we have to almost coax and cajole both the parts of our vital uh, so that they don't take over and sink us into depression or excessive excitement again part of the vital being yeah so uh, that's where the vital being i would end it uh, although it's never ending but i would end it because i just want to touch upon everything so then uh, i would like to start with the awakening of the psychic now this is our according to mother and sure window it's our true individuality psychic being is who we truly are uh, who i naturally am what is the purpose of my life is to manifest the psychic out and Uh, according to mother and shurubindo uh, psychic being is in the fourth dimension it's as if we have to do a little tricks here and there like practices here and there to touch the dimension of the psychic for example if we look at the stuff in the room you know maybe the the phone or the book they are in 2d or 3d yeah but the psychic being is in the fourth dimension now there is an exercise to touch the fourth dimension to have that feel of the fourth dimension uh which we can also connect with 
connect uh, putting our consciousness on space so if you focus your consciousness on the objects in the room you get a different kind of a feeling in the being if you focus your sensation on the space in the room and the space in your own being within you know the body then there is a different kind of a poise that you take a poise that you are taking the poise of consciousness so uh, there is a meditation by dr sumitra basu he is connected with pondicherry circles i can share it on uh, on the chat group where he says that uh, you close your eyes so we can do that it's 3 uh, 4 minutes so let us close our eyes and imagine that behind you is standing another you there is another you standing at the back at the back there is another you another you another you so as if there is a chain of your clones standing at your back so long long chain long chain you know so follow the thread uh, trail of the chain as if you are just looking at your own clones when you go back as if your eyes have turned to your back and you're looking at your own clones standing behind you and they're going very far like there is a long queue that is standing of you and you go very far very far very far and then you reach as if a point you can just see a point where the queue is ending and this is a queue of you standing lots of yous standing now as if you remove all the queue completely eliminate all the queue just retain the last point in the queue which was looking at just a point and then bring it closer from your back call it closer that last clone of you that was standing at the end of the queue bring it closer from behind all is happening at your back bring it closer bring it closer now the closer it comes the bigger it becomes it comes bigger your big it's your clone it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger the more close it comes it becomes bigger and now imagine that it is taking charge of you from the back as if it's enveloping you or kind of taking charge of your being from the back focus your attention at that the last you that has come from behind and it has taken charge taken possession of your being from the back stay there with your focus on this so it's at the back of your spine your back it's grasping it's the whole being that has come forward is taking charge of your being and your attention is to that being this is the fourth dimension so whenever i want to focus my attention whenever i want to stabilize myself in my truth this is one little tool that i can use i focus myself at the back in my back our spine there as if a being is possessing me and that's myself only 
Now it's not part of my body. One cannot say it's part of my body. So if we look inside, you know, maybe through surgery, try to find, we won't find the psychic being. That's what it is meant when we say it's the fourth dimension. It's not of the body. It's occupying the body. Just like space is there and in space, a chair is there. Now, each bit of chair is occupied by space. If you really look closely, each particle of chair is occupied by space. That's how the particle exists because the space allows, allows it to be. And that's how the psychic being or the soul It's like that space which cannot be said that it is only in my body. I cannot say actually it's only in my body. Yeah. It's occupying my body and it's vaster than my body. Just like space is allowing the chair to be and yet the space is vaster than the chair. So there, in, as that space or as that being that we just did you know, in the meditation, that is one of the tools that can be used to touch the fourth dimension. Okay, so I will read something from the mother on this fourth dimension. Hmm? So, uh, yeah. Mother is asking, do you know what the fourth dimension is? Do you know what it is? Sadak is saying, no, Mother. Mother says, but in fact, that is the best approach of modern science, the fourth dimension. The divine for us is the fourth dimension. Within the fourth dimension, it is everywhere. You see, everywhere, always. Again, the metaphor we can use is the space. Yeah, it's everywhere. It does not come and go. She's talking about the divine age. She says it does not come and go. It is there always everywhere. It is we, our stupidity, which prevents us from feeling it. There is no need to go away. Not at all, not at all, not at all. To be conscious of your psychic being you must once be capable of feeling the fourth dimension. Otherwise, you cannot know what it is. Indispensable, indispensable. Life begins with that. So she's saying that life, our life, true life, begins with the touch of the psychic. With knowing the psychic, consciously becoming aware of the psychic. Psychic is not asleep. Psychic is awake. I am asleep because I am awake to the senses. So slowly I become awake to the psychic. The consciousness knows itself, poises itself as that. Otherwise, mother shares, otherwise one is in falsehood, in a muddle and in confusion and in darkness. The mind, the mind, mind, mind. Otherwise, to be conscious of your consciousness, you have to mentalize it. It is dreadful. So she says that when we do it on the mental and intellectual plane to become conscious of our consciousness, it re really is not worth attempting. It's dreadful, she shares. But when we become available to the fourth dimension, get a taste of it, then we know where I must poise myself, where I must station myself, anchor myself. So this is the dimension of the psychic being. Mother shares that it is the in the depths of our heart, not the physical heart. Uh, so where the center solar plexus is, towards the depth, if you go horizontally towards back to your, towards your spine, she says there is the seat of the psychic. Now, when she says seat of the psychic, it does not mean that we find the psychic in the body. 
she just refers to the fourth dimension as if the psychic is occupying or touching the body but is also beyond the body so i'll share this uh, little meditation um, with all of you i think i won't share much iske baad zyada share karne ki zarurat nahi so uh, rest of the psychic education we'll take up in the next session uh, it's not really psychic education it's just becoming available to the psychic opening yourself to the grace of psychic which is 24/7 present because if i'm lost in my drama and theory uh, in the stories then i will not be aware of what the treasure is hidden here but when as shweta was sharing in the beginning when the stories uh, do not have that much of importance then i can become available to something which is more precious deeper and knowing that light within i can now spill it out in the world also yeah and that would be a gradual process like an organic flowering but the process of turning within and finding the psychic knowing yourself at the psychic uh, is itself a tedious process mother says although not that tedious also because she says that if you are really very sharp and you can concentrate strongly then you can do it in 3 days she says but then otherwise it's a journey of a lifetime so depends on where we are and there are also many other experiences where she says that many a times just through traumatic events in lives or tragedies or even a very challenging risky situation we get a taste of the psychic so we'll read all all of that uh, next time when we share more about it and once we have tasted it mother says one it's our duty to relive it once i know that beauty in me then it's my responsibility to relive it live it more and more and make it more of my life make it more real than what i consider real right now yeah so anything at that this point just on this 3 days thing uh, uh, what does mother mean by uh, you can get it in 3 days so Which she is... yeah i think she was uh, i'll share the exact paragraph with you i think she is sharing about that uh, if we want to have a taste of the psychic know what the psychic is she says it can be actually with a persistent concentration we can actually get a taste in 3 days okay concentration okay mm. yeah. 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 so on the whatsapp group i'll share uh, this uh, talk by dr sumitra basu it's a very interesting talk itself and towards the 50th minute he talks about this little meditation that we did uh, which we can do whenever you know it, once you you've heard it only once then you can actually do it without listening to the meditation uh, just to have a taste of it it would be nice to listen to the talk so i'll share that with all of you and rest the main theory and uh, more practical applications of how to know the psychic how to live the psychic uh, that we'll discuss next sunday then Yeah, so thank you for joining. Thank you, Virenji. Thank you, Shweta. Thank you, Mohita. Although, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Shweta. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah. Ma'am, I could, I could, I was able to join a little late, so I missed on a lot of things. But yeah. would we uh, be able to get the recording of this? Yeah, session? I always share the recording on the uh, group. Yeah, so you will get the recording of the session also, and what I was sharing that also I'll share on the WhatsApp group. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye.